great. So I'm glad that we're back, girl. We were just really chit-chatting and we were going on and, and basically talking about the challenges or the misconceptions rather about prenups. And also we were talking about the, the provisions that you should want in there, right? If you, like, again, if you have children that are from someone else, you want to think about what you need to protect those children. So if you have property you own beforehand, you want to be clear that property remains your property. It, it's not shared because a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, well, I had it before the marriage. It's separate property. You're right. It is. However, if during the marriage you paid the mortgage or paid the taxes, which everyone does, the other party can make a claim that, well, you use community resources to pay and maintain that property. Therefore, I should get some of the equity or something from it. So that's what a prenup can protect against. So you want to protect against property uh, for property. Um, oh, also another big one is retirements, yeah. IRAs that kind of things, um, those, those type of things, you know, now we have Bitcoin and those types of things. But I always say uh, also a provision that says, if you've been married over a certain amount of years and you guys, if you start with like a, a big difference in what you earn, then something that says he is going to give you, or she's going to give him a certain amount of money to transition into a new place. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And you, everybody needs that. I, I, I went on a date with this strange, crazy person. And he was telling me, he waited till the date to let me know he was not yet divorced. I said, oh, he was like, yeah, it's supposed to be final at the end of the month. I'm like, yeah, okay. And I had asked, he was like, yeah. I said, well, what are you, what are you guys arguing over? He was like, well, we arguing over what she wants me to give her. I said, oh, what is that? Um, he was like, well, you know, she wants me to give her some money. I said, well, what do you think will be reasonable? Re reasonable he said nothing i was like what was her job he was like oh she was a homemaker i said how long were you i said how long were you married he said two years and we have a two-year-old and i said and how old was she because he was in his 40s how old was she when he got married this man said 18 years old i said boy get out of my face <laughs> he married an 18 year old for two years that girl ain't even 21 she can't even go have a drink when you piss her off okay and, and more than that, I was like, look, if, if that's your type, if 18 year olds are your type, I am not. So, you know, we wasting each other's time. I'm not your type. You know, what? So, when I tell you, you gave everyone some sound advice, because here in Texas, everything is community property. When, you yeah. when you're married, when you're married, yes. it's explained. Once you yes. get married, if you don't have that prenup. That person can take from your children if, you, if you've already had children. Yes. Oh, and let me be clear. If you guys are kind of equal what and what and what you have, a prenup will be sufficient. But if there's a big disparity, then that's when you want to start talking about a post-nup. A post-nup. See, a prenup really just sets things and protects what you had before you came in. The post-nup is what covers what you gain during the marriage. And that's because under the law, um, there's a basic concept we learn in law school that basically says you can't contract for something that doesn't exist. Right. You can't say if you ever get a boat, I'm a half owner in the boat. Technically, you, you couldn't do that in a regular situation, but you can with respect to a marriage. Why? Because the default is community property. But if the two of you together want to make some other accommodation, you can, and that is what a post-nup would be called. But you cannot, cannot sign the post-nup until after you're married. Yeah. yeah. Somebody. When I tell you, I just, oh, I'm just enjoying this conversation with Simone today. Now, as it pertains to dating, what advice would you give women with children or even singles? The one thing I tell my girls, especially my girls with kids, because, you know, I'm I'm in my late 30s. Um, the guy that I'm dating, he's in his mid 40s. But I tell my sis, especially my girls with children, is if you have kids, I think generally it's best that you date men who do as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think they value you more. You don't want to be with a man that you have to convince Right, right. That you are, you know, awesome, especially if if he, in his mind, he has you competing with girls with no kids. Right. No, we're not going to do that. Right. Also, 
especially if you don't want any more children, you can be a great blended family. It's really important that people have marriage mentors. I call it a marriage mentor because I feel that between social media, television, and so forth, we have very unrealistic expectations of what marriage is like in practice. I agree. Now, I, I definitely hear you on the honesty. I also feel like we have to be a lot more reasonable with our expectations, especially yeah. as we get older. Now, when I say reasonable, I'm not saying expect cheating or tolerate such. But I do think that as we get older, we tend to be less likely to give men the benefit of the doubt. That's true. Whether that, that is, uh, you know, he said he was going to call me and he didn't call me back that night. Mm -hmm. Or... Or it's, um, you know, well, we've talked on the phone three times, but he hasn't yet asked me for a solidified date. Mm -hmm. I think that um, sometimes as we get older, we've had very rigid rules. And one of the best things that we can do is be willing to adapt mm -hmm. and also understand and not take certain things so per personally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we like men with careers and jobs, so they're busy, too. Yeah. But in the end, I have found I can always tell when they're really, truly interested because they will make time yeah. and I don't have to make excuses for them because too often, you know, they, they will be busy guys and they won't necessarily be making time. But I'm like, well, maybe he's this. Well, maybe he's that. No, no, no. You shouldn't even have to guess about those things either. I mean, and that's the, yeah, there's so many guys. There's like I'm, I'm like for me. Some guys are vague and some guys are straightforward. Mm. One of the things I love doing is matchmaking, hooking people up. I feel like it is part of my duty to keep black money in the black community. <laughs> and so to hook us up, especially hooking my, my sisters up with good men. Um, and then the second thing I'm going to talk about is why it's very essential. If you had kids or if you're dating someone who does, that the child support stuff is um, tightly uh, put together on lock and key and organized. But before I speak to that, I was going to say one of the biggest challenges I face with, or that I hear my girlfriends talk about is where do I meet a quality guy? No mm -hmm. matter what city I'm in, my girlfriends, you know, I hear them complain, well, Houston, they have too many options. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, you know, it's so many beautiful women, but we got these downloads, this and that. But I would say the number one place to meet um, men that are going to be like-minded is you get up and travel. Do activities that are of interest to you. So like you have a daughter, it might be sign her up for Girl Scout camp and go pick her up. Girl, when she, you pick her up, huh? Oh, honey, we tried Girl Scouts, but it's going to be advantageous because she's she's as, almost as tall as me. And so she wants to, to start basketball. But I said, there you go. Oh, that's the number one. Everybody knows. I say number one is AAU games. And somebody like they all got her. Not, they all have wives. Not all of them. Some of them are single dads. Actually, when I went I, with my boyfriend, who's a single dad, and his single dad homeboys were all like, where your girls at? Where your girls at? And I said, well, it's funny that you asked. <laughs> so the tournaments, I'm not talking about the regular everyday games. I'm talking about them out of town tournaments. That's where the single daddies be at. Okay. That's where they're at. Um, huh? And you know they're active too. So that's what you want. You want the single dads who are active, who ain't got no child support arrears, who pay every month on time, you know, so forth. Or maybe they don't have child support because they got 50 50 custody. But you want to do things like that, um, choir, you know, um, performances at your child's school. That's never, or anybody's school. It don't even have to be your kid's school. Go to somebody's graduation, go to somebody's award ceremony, you know, that's a child, because that's where you're going to find parents fathers who um are either single you know they're they have some single ones there too um and truthfully the majority of men are either divorced or you know there's married there's divorced and there's never been married so you got some options in there but one thing i have noticed though too is once you get him ladies 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 you really at the beginning of y'all dating before if he has children before his ex finds out about you, you need to make sure his child support paperwork is together. Because, I'm honey, they can say all the time, oh, we good, we good, we good. You don't know they're not good until she finds out about you and how cute you are. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you want. You would rather them get it organized and get it together before they know you exist, right? 
then it's just abiding by everything. And now I've had some homeboys where I had to coach them through. And like I had a homeboy, he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to propose to my girlfriend. I said, not till you get on, put yourself on child support. He had never been on child support. The two of them had simply an agreement. And he was like, well, won't that be crazy? Won't that be weird? I was like, no, because all you're doing is literally, you don't even necessarily have to have a lawyer. They have, uh, each county has what's called a mediator. You yes. put on paper what you've already been doing. So let's say he's been giving you $1,000 a month and he sees, he gets the child every other weekend starting on Thursdays, whatever it is. You go to the mediation session. They have the template. You write it down. And yes. you notarize it and you sign it mm. and the judge signs it. And then, and this goes for girls too, because when he come to your house and it's this fine, sexy, tall man in your kitchen with basketball shorts on and Gucci flip flops, he going to be like, who, you know, you already know if people get uptight about it. I know for myself, you know, when you have a situation where you may find out things after the fact, you got to get past that. You got to get past that. But I know even for myself, I put in my child support paperwork and my child father has to meet me at a location outside of my house. I didn't trust the process. I have to like, and it, it's very hard to convince a man to put himself on. But like I said, it's one of two things. Like he'd be like, I don't want the government in my business. All of that is BS. The, you pay taxes. So the government is in your business. It's a okay. lot railroading these women. I mean, I've heard the stories. I've seen it. You know, I've been, I was in social services and I've always, all of that's a part of education, but prior to actually becoming an educator, um, I was in social services and I managed for years, but I would hear the stories of the women and the men who tend to not have it on paper that they are paying their child support ladies. It has been a consistent theme that I have seen, a seamless thread, that more than likely these men have something going on with the mother or there's some confusion that's going to be Preach. that you don't need to yes. because no woman in her right mind is going to sit up here and not agree to something on paper okay, that is fair for the child because that's what it's about. My attorney had to remind me of that when I tried to dismiss my child support. He said, Leon, you done lost your mind. We went through the attorney general's office. They are not going to let you dismiss no. it. And, and you know why we also don't dismiss it or you don't do that? Because FAFSA doesn't, okay? I'm and when it's time for that child to go to college, they are expecting that the, the child has to submit their mama's income and what their dad's income is. And the only way to get out of that, actually, is if the dad hasn't paid in a few years, then you can print that little page from the attorney general's office and say, we're not submitting daddies because daddy is a deadbeat. Here you go. Here's the proof. Leave us alone. Boom. Did y'all catch that? So listen, ladies, did y'all catch with some up? She just dropping jewels. And basically, in short, if you're child's father is in the arrears mm -hmm. like if he's in the arrears 40,000 50,000 20 yeah. or even gentlemen if the mother's in arrears okay 20, right 50,000 and your child is getting ready to go to college the parent still owes that money to you for the child okay but you right. can fill out that paperwork that FAFSA and say that you know here's the proof that this is what I'm owed and then your right. child have better chances at qualifying for some of that money. Because I had um I had a mentee, a little girl I was working with, and she was up for a really big scholarship at a, a school. And what happened was they couldn't give it to her because they said she didn't submit her financial aid by the deadline. Well, she did, but she didn't submit the dad stuff because they couldn't find it. But they had told her, you if you're not gonna submit it, you have to submit the waiver for the dad stuff to do the waiver. She would have needed to complete the section that says he hasn't paid. He's in arrears. That's why I don't have his information. He won't give it. But because she didn't do that, they saw it as though she didn't even turn it in at all and got zero money for her first year. Her second year, she got it. Her second year, she got everything paid for. But she's got $20,000 of debt from her first year just because her FAFSA was considered incomplete. Wow. That, that is someone I tell you. It has just been a, a true joy just being able to have this time with you this evening to chit chat and talk about. Well, you have to come on mine. Yes. We'll have to talk about some some upcoming things on mine, including 
um, we'll have to see when it busts out, but how I, I'm one of the few, I, I understand Wells Fargo as it relates to Wendy Williams oh. and Wells Fargo is just out here trying to cover their butt. Cause you got, guess who's trying to take her money. Don't say that. Are Kevin, you- Kevin. This is not fair. Wendy Williams is speaking out against her former financial advisor and Wells Fargo, who she claims is keeping her from her millions. The talk show host took to Instagram on Tuesday to let her supporters know what's really going on. After her bank, Wells Fargo alleged she is an incapacitated person who needs a guardianship and can't access her money. The 57-year-old captioned the video, quote, I'm tired of everyone speaking as if they're me in this scenario. It's time I let all of my loving supporters know what's really been going on with Wendy. We've got a lot to talk about. Lori Schiller and Wells Fargo have this guardianship petition about keeping me away from my money. This is not right. And you know this is not fair. Speaking of that guardianship petition. And this guy named Bernie Young. In the video, Wendy brought up her former manager, Bernie Young, who she fired earlier this year. According to reports, Young recently filed to be Wendy's legal guardian. And Wendy alleged... It's Kevin. That's my guess. Why? It's Kevin. Who, think about it. Who else could it be? The paperwork from Wells Fargo specifically said their concern is that she's an incapacitated person, which means like she's she's sickly, but that she's under the undue influence of a uh, of family or uh, relatives. Who's a, it? Who's a family of relatives? It's not her son. He ain't even old enough. He's not even 21. Mm. And remember, she fired. The financial woman, her name was Lori Schwimmer. The financial woman that she fired that's in the middle of this, they've had her for 15 years, which means she was who else's financial woman? Kevin's. Mm -hmm. So for years, Kevin, because remember, Wendy always said Kevin handled the finances. So for years. All that money. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. So for years. Kevin would just pick up the phone, call Lori and say, Lori, move this from here to here to here. Well, once Wendy got sick, Kevin decided he was going to swoop back up in now and call. This is this is my theory. Call Lori and say, Lori, I want you to do da, 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 da. And Lori, if anybody has watched anything with her giving Wendy giving interviews, she don't she's over and done with this man. And so Lori is like, no, I'm not doing what you've asked. That's why she fired Lori. See, Lori didn't get fired till after Lori didn't do what Kevin, I believe what Kevin directed Wendy to ask for. Mm. And Lori didn't do it because Lori said, I know this is that man. And it would be opening Wells Fargo up to a lawsuit. So if Lori lets Kevin spend up Wendy's money, Wells Fargo will absolutely get sued. Oh, and guess what? Mm. Wendy's attorney Mm. is Kevin's attorney from his divorce. What's wrong with these people? She better move on. Sometimes you gotta you gotta think outside the box and you have to move around. So isn't it interesting how that part of the narrative though, they didn't say nothing about that. No, they didn't. And they wouldn't. But But if you knew that it was Kevin. So Kevin is who rang the alarm, would made the woman say, "Uh uh-uh, this doesn't seem right. I'm going to freeze it until a court says I have to let it go. So basically a court says, you know, she either needs to be in guardianship or she's just fine. And yes, this is what we should do. But I also respected that uh, Wells Fargo, they sealed the docket so that everybody don't know, you know, her personal business. So like I said, this is my guess based on the evidence presented. So we'll see when everything comes out, but it makes perfect sense to me that it was Kevin who triggered it because they specifically said, we think she's under the undue influence. It's a relative or family member. I believe it was wording. Girl, who else you think it could be? It's, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's so sad. And you get privy to all of this information. Who else we got going online and we can learn a lesson from today? Girl, I was saying, lastly, I want to do one with Brian about Brian Flores. 
the um, NFL head coach. Last several years was released last month and has filed as of yesterday a lawsuit against the National Football League about its hiring practices. Also, here are his attorneys, Doug Wigdor and John Alefterakis. Yes. Thank you all for Thank coming. You. Yeah. Thanks um, for having us, and Brian, let's just jump in. We have 20 minutes here, so we will be able to cover a lot of ground, and we are delighted. Um, you filed this lawsuit, which yeah. you are aware is obviously going to have enormous repercussions. What was the tipping point for you through your experiences that made you feel this was something you needed to do? Well, I mean, just, you know, I've been on, you know, several interviews over the years. Um, and look, I mean, this is, we didn't have to file a lawsuit for, for the world to know that there's an, an issue from a hiring and firing um, um, practices so in the National Football League. Why did that, that's um, correct. A lot of people just, have yeah. pointed this out. So why did you feel you needed to do this? Because we need change. That was, that was, that was the number one reason. Um, and I know there's, there's a sacrifice, there's risk to that, but um, at the end of the day, um, we need change. We need change. Um, I, I know many very capable um, black coaches, um, some of my staff who I know um, if given an opportunity or when given an opportunity are going to go and do a great job on their interview. Um, and I would just hate for that uh, to, be a, to be a waste. Uh, I, and I think, you know, we need to change the hearts and minds of, of the people making those decisions. That's why we're, that's why, you know, we filed the lawsuit. Who are those people? Who specifically do you think needs the change? Uh, the owners uh, uh, of the NFL. All of um, whom, all of whom are obviously white. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I'm a lawyer, obviously, but I mean, sometimes you need litigation to create change. I mean, the Rooney rule didn't work. Today, um, he just got picked up as an, as a, head defensive coach or something for the Steelers, but he's the one that sued the NFL. Well, you know, a lot of people are kind of talking crap about it, this and that, but what I want people to understand is he filed a class action mm. and on CNN, I'm sorry, on ESPN, they keep saying, well, nobody's going to join it. Nobody's going to join it. I want everyone to understand the purpose of the class action. Yes. While yes, he would like to receive the miscompensation from how he feels he was missed over in these coaching jobs. But more than that, and I'll go into this on my page, he has like seven things he's asking for the NFL to do that would make it more fair for everybody. Wow. That's what a class action is truly, truly asked for. Mm -hmm. Class action suits versus him. He could have filed just a separate suit, just him versus the NFL. Right. But he would have gotten none of what he asked for. So he's asking that they... Um, create new programs to train and bring up more African-Americans and minority players to become coaches. He's asking that more of them get considered, not just for head coach, but you have to consider them for lower level because you got to be the lower level coach to be candidate for the higher level. Um, he training certain training and, in, in uh, programs for, for people of, for the NFL to basically understand more about diversity and this, that, and the third. But they don't talk about that on TV. Girl, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, it, it gets to a point where, with relationships in general, if you are, are thinking about any relationship that you're really a part of, that you really rely on, you have to have systems in place to protect yourself and to mm -hmm. protect the party. You know, mm -hmm. this is why I don't want to start, I, I, I had a a group of, of people who wanted to, um, that I've known for years, but they wanted to start a new brand with me. And I explained that with the protections that I have, I wasn't quite interested in um, creating a new brand with two people, neither of which were an attorney. It was nothing personal. I, 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 I love them both. I admire them both, right? But I have to protect myself and I have to protect my brand. And I, mm -hmm. I see attorneys often, right? So I don't want to build something and then have to tear it down because somebody's not doing what they need to do financially or because okay. it's coming for all of us yes. coming at me for my personal belonging. So I have that. You know, I, I just think that we really need to think things through before we start building with others. Yeah. You know, we, we have to get to a place where we have to be intelligent enough to have the conversations because for these brothers out here, 
People don't get it. Uh, it. It happens if you're making love, baby, people, having sex, whatever you call it, um, a baby is going to come. It's just it's just the way it is. Then you've got the Nick Cannons of the world who were like, bring them on. Mo babies, mo babies. Why do people question that? I mean, because it like it's that's a Eurocentric concept when you think about the the ideas of like it's, you're supposed to have this one person for the rest of your life, and really that's just a classified property when you think about it. Nick has previously been candid about his kids and revealed during an interview with the rap duo City Girls in July 2021 that none of his kids were an accident. He seemed to double down on his stance in his recent interview too, claiming he just doesn't go along with what some might consider traditional beliefs. I get into it because I don't, you know, those are the concepts that a lot of people, because we're so indoctrinated into it, be like, we have to have it this way. I'm not, you know, I, I don't subscribe to it. I actually think women are blessing us. Those women, those women and, and all women are the ones that open themselves up to say, I would like to allow this man in my world and I will birth this child. Mm -hmm. So it ain't my decision. I'm just, I'm, I'm following suit. The Wild Nout star went on to explain his thought process on the whole thing. The idea that a man should have one woman, we shouldn't have anything. I have no ownership over this person. Like, if we really talking about how we coexist and how we populate, it's about what exchange can we create together. So I've never really subscribed to that mentality. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? I understand the institution of marriage and stuff, but if we go back to what that was about, that was the classified property. That was because one a father gave another man his daughter for land. So when you really get to that concept, it's like, all right, well, we got to change all of this up because I don't want ownership over anybody. I don't have ownership of any of the uh, mothers or like we create families in that sense of we created a beautiful entity. Nick has welcomed four kids in less than a year. His rumored girlfriend, Alyssa Scott, gave birth to a baby boy named Zen in July, and he is now dad to twin sons Zion and Zillion with DJ Abby De La Rosa, who were born in June. Nick also shares six-month-old daughter Power and four-year-old son Golden with model Brittany Bell and 10-year-old twins Moroccan and Monroe with ex-wife Mariah Carey. He told The Breakfast Club that the women in his life know his story. Every woman that I, I deal with or dealt with Obviously, my life is on front street Correct. at all times. They they know how I feel, and it usually is a concept. Like I don't, I'm not going around like I'm who I'm gonna impregnate next. Like nah, it's usually scenarios and kind. Like that's the thing. People say certain things in the mm -hmm. public, but when you really look at how a family infrastructure is designed, the, the woman is the one that always leads and makes the decision. Speaking of which, let me get you to chime in on that before we close it out here. Okay. There. Yeah. Well, with Nick, so I read recently, I don't know how true it is, that he pays $10,000 a week per kid. So that's 40000 per child. I think he's up to seven, seven kids now. And I just have to say, like, I'm, I'm, I know he, he can afford it, but it's not about the money. It's about the quality time. And I see no possible way for you to be able to go to six, six different households oh and give all of yourself while running all of the businesses that he's running. And then, so then I also, I hold these ladies responsible too for making the choice because when your child grows up and is like, how come I don't see my dad that much or they have these daddy issues. That mom's going to have to look at herself and take some responsibility for selecting him to be the child's father. And the, my question is, because I don't really know, all I kept hearing in the news is that he was having children. But I want to say this, and I want to say this from my heart. As a woman who grew up and I, you know, I had my first love, which is my boy's dad. And then years later, I waited, you know, I dated here and there, you know. But years and years, I waited before I got into another relationship. And that was with my daughter's father. So I have two sons with one man. And I have a daughter by one here in Houston. And I say that to say it was the most, the most selfish thing that I have ever done in my life was to bring life into this world without making sure that that life was secured on both ends. Mm. It's a selfish thing. In contrary, it was also the most courageous thing that I have ever done to make sure that I brought the life into the world, that I trusted God to bring me through the process. But 
I had to say it because of the nature of this conversation, because we live in a world where everybody wants to do everything they want to do just because they can. But you yeah. continue to play games with the life of these children. I didn't understand. My babies were babies. I had it all under control. But as they get older, there's so, certain emotional needs and certain things that just start to see. you be like, ah, OK, I didn't realize it. You cannot be. Women are not mommy and daddy. Yes, no. I healthy, whole children. Yes. And I'm grateful for them. And I love them. I got one that was military. I got another one that went to college, got degrees and still getting degrees and doing real estate, just handling his business. But at the end of the day, it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. So I, I forgave myself and I asked God to forgive Good. me. But I needed to say that because people keep bringing these children in this world and, and they want to have these kids just because they can. Don't you know that your child is going to grow up and they're going to be who they are destined to be. They're going to make their own decisions. They're going to have their own life. And so you were saying, how in the world can Nick Cannon properly father six, seven, eight children in six, seven, eight different households? How is that possible? Mm -mm. And I, I really think, I think he has a sex addiction. I think he needs to get it under wraps. And I think he is the quintessential example of who needs to get a snip, snip, snip it up. It's unfair to the children you've already made to add to it, to make them split the time with their father because you are choosing to be irresponsible. And I don't want to hear those people who say, well, maybe he planned them. If he did, it's a dumb plan. It's a bad plan. Apparently, it's an unwise and unfair plan. He's been planning these children. That's what I've heard in the news. That, and, and, and for the life of me, this is, this is what strikes me now, I'm, you know, I'm a Christian and, you know, I try to keep this particular podcast just inspirational, but I am who I am. So I'm going to throw it out there. There is a scripture that says in the last days, several women will take hold of one man. And, mm. that's and I think I'm going to put that up somewhere in this podcast so people can read it because it's just a sign of the time. There is no reason. I, when I hear about women having vaginal issues, all kinds of things going on down there, I'm like, no wonder. Everybody's sharing the same man. Our bodies yep. are sharing a man. They're external. We're, we're internal. We are not meant to be sharing a man. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Don't let people tell you that. all of these things going on with your body, your, your mental health and everything else because everybody right. sharing these men. But all right, y'all. So here it is. I never usually use my own personal pictures as pick of the day, but today I have to do it because I want to share this beautiful, extraordinary moment. Uh, It's me and uh, Bree, the next mother <laughs> uh, of our child. It's a boy we found out officially yesterday. <laughs> Even that felt, it's weird, because that, that sounds weird saying the next mother, because uh, as everybody knows, I have a lot of children. Yeah. And, um, and I love them all, dearly, sincerely. This is their first child together, and Bree will also be a first-time mom. The mass Singer host is already father to seven other kids. He shares 10-year-old twins Moroccan and Monroe with Mariah Carey, 4-year-old Golden and 1-year-old Powerful Queen with Brittany Bell, and 7-month-old twin Zion and Zillow, whom he had with Abby De La Rosa. Neganella's the son, Zen, was born in June 2021 and tragically died on December 5th after being diagnosed with brain cancer. I'm like, what kind of women will actually want to share Nick Cannon or any man. I don't I don't even want as, as handsome as he is because I've always thought he was handsome. I just wouldn't want to date him. I would be scared to death because God forbid. Now, I chose to get my tubes tied because I, after my daughter, I said, I will never, ever. I know that's right. I don't care how much. Because when I love a man, Simone, I love a man. And I said, uh, I will never bring a child into this world as precious as they are without a guarantee. So I chose to get my tube side. And it wasn't so I could just be out here running the streets because I have not been doing that. It was the personal choice because I knew the impact that it has on a life when it mm -hmm. a mother or and a father both in the home. And I just I yeah. never had to put another child through that. Mm -hmm. OK, so now. Uh, OK, so tell us a little bit about your upbringing and how yeah. you 
became an attorney. Sure. So I grew up in Dallas, Texas, um, uh, raised by my mother and father. They're together to this day. They're a trip. And I'm the oldest of three. I have a little brother in the middle. He is a music producer in California and a baby sister who owns a, um, a, a fast food franchise. And um, basically growing up, I was always, I loved problem solving. I loved helping people. And so I knew at an early age that I wanted to become an attorney um, to help people because I was a child actress. I used to do commercials and things. And when I would do the commercial, I would never get money because my mom wanted me to see it as an extracurricular, you know, no different than going to dance class or soccer practice, but I would get a toy. So I had finally booked a national commercial for McDonald's. It was for the Hot Wheels. It was like the one where the Hot Wheels, you could pull it back and you would go forward. And after I booked that, I knew I was going to get a big toy because that was a big big deal. Because like we used to get my toys from like McFrugals, which is like big lot. So they were like irregular and like couldn't fit real Barbie clothes. It looked like the clothes of like a man. Anyway. So I was like, please, mommy, mommy, after this, can I go to Tours R Us? She was like, yes. And can I get a real Barbie, a regular Barbie that can fit regular clothes? She was like, yes. So um, time came and went and I never got my check. Long story short, my agent ran off with my money and I never got paid. And it would have been over $25,000. And this was in 1985. So, or, or 89 rather. So that was like huge. It would have put me, you know, helped me through college, a variety of things. But I remember as a child thinking that is terrible that grownups can do this to kids. I'm going to grow up and be a lawyer so that I can help kids. So this doesn't happen to them. Mm -hmm. So, um, subsequent to that, I, I ended up joining the screen actors guild, which protects all actors from that because your, your checks have to go first to the screen actors guild. They cut your attorney, um, your agent, their check, and then give you your check. So they, you know, that helps for that. But, um, yeah, so that's how I started with wanting to be an attorney. Awesome. That was such a sweet story. Um, as it pertains to how you digested the outcome of the situation, it's just, it speaks a lot to your character, even then as a child. Oh, thank you. Disappointing from the fact that you actually had to go through something like that. But I always tell my sons, now that they're grown adults, you know, everything happens for a reason when it happens outside of your control. Mm-hmm. You take control. You do that and you make conscious decisions. You make the right decisions. You do the right things. But be mindful how you treat people because it comes back. It does. For sure. So I'm just excited and I'm just grateful to have you here. So is there anything else? All right. No, I just, I just want to encourage everyone, please check out my YouTube channel. It's girl, is that legal? And on it, um, I drop new videos each week. There's no specific time. So make sure you set a reminder. Um, and it's definitely one of those podcasts you can sit and watch it, or it's one to just have planned in the background while you're doing multiple stuff. Cause hopefully not only are you entertained, but you might learn something. Yes. And then also you have the, the podcast with Rashid. Yes. With my boyfriend called Ages and Stages. So he and I both met on Ready to Love. So on Ages and Stages, we review um, the current season of Ready to Love. But we also talk about dating, love, relationships. We have panels and we do a lot more there. So check out Ages and Stages on YouTube. So, Simone, it was great having you on the Inspiration Incubator today. I hope to check in sometime soon. Thank you so much for being my special guest. And I can't wait to touch bases later on to see all the wonderful advice that you are giving your clients and the community. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it.